welcome back. So, last day we got introduced ourselves to this centrality measures. So, you are trying to understand like how uh, important a node is or how prominent a node is in a network and one of the measures that we defined was degree centrality. Now, today I start with a claim that degree centrality is not the only way to indicate the importance of a node in a network. So, that is what I also write down in the slides is that degree of a node does not you know actually essentially determine all the importance of a uh, node in a network. So, uh, and uh, I would probably think that you would also tend to agree and one of the striking examples or one of the good examples to substantiate this claim is the following one. So, where you see the in these slides that there are these two regions C 1 and C 2 okay, and these two regions are only connected by the vertex V okay, by the vertex V sitting in the middle of the two regions. Okay. So, this is like kind of a bridge this is this node is kind of bridging between the two different regions of the networks and definitely these net these nodes are very very important. For instance, if you want to pass information from region C 1 to region C 2 you have to only rely on V there is no other way. Okay. So, there are lot of interesting and important repercussions of having nodes like V in a given network, but then the question is that how to quantify the presence of such nodes in a network and that brings us to what we call the betweenness centrality. Betweenness centrality of the nodes in a network. Now, if you try to question like how does the node V differ from the other nodes. Okay. If you try to make a question like this, so what, what metric or what property can differentiate between the node V and the other nodes in the network? One of the immediate things that you can think of is probably the shortest paths. Okay. So, the number of shortest paths that are passing between any pair of points okay, through V, if that is very high with respect to the total number of shortest paths that in general pass through the pass between those two points, then you can say that V kinds of kind of sits in the middle of these two pair of uh, this pair of nodes and is acting like a bridge. So, for instance, if all the shortest paths between say two nodes S and T, if all the shortest paths get routed through V. Okay. So, then the betweenness of node V in the context of the pair of nodes S and T would be very high. Okay. That is what we try to define as betweenness centrality as in the next slide. So, basically geodesic distance is nothing but the shortest distance or the shortest path length. Okay. So, centrality or betweenness centrality of the node V is nothing but the number of shortest paths, shortest paths passing through V, number of shortest paths between S and T passing through V expressed as a fraction of total number of shortest paths passing between S and T. So, basically you try to express the number of shortest paths passing through V. Okay relative to the total number of shortest paths between S and T. So, and that you do for all pairs of nodes in the network in the context of a particular vertex V okay. and that is what defines G V as I show in the slides. 
Okay. So, G V is nothing but the sum over all pairs S and T, where neither S or T is actually V, sum of the ratio of sigma S T V, which is the number of shortest paths that pass through V from S to T divided by the total number of shortest paths between S and T. Okay. So, now given this formula, if you try to compute the between the centrality of the node V in the picture on the slide, then you get a number as 2 n 1 into n 2, where n 1 is the total number of nodes in the region C 1 and n 2 is the total number of nodes in region C 2. That is basically all shortest paths between all pairs of nodes in these two regions actually pass through V and there could be very important repercussions of say removing V in the context of a particular network. So, for instance, say if you have an epidemic spreading network, okay. suppose there is an epidemic spreading over this network that I have shown you in the slides. Let us draw it for simplicity again. So, suppose you have the two regions C 1 and C 2 with some nodes out here and some nodes out here and all these nodes are connected via this node V. Okay. Now, suppose there is some disease outbreak here in this region and suppose this person is infected immediately, the others in this region will also get infected right? and this infection will now pass on okay? and in if the node V gets infected somehow, then there is a high chance that all the nodes in the region C 2 will also get infected through V. So, the one of the important questions is like in such networks is whom to vaccinate and possibly if you have a limited number of vaccines, then the first person that one should vaccinate in such an uh, epidemic spreading network is perhaps V, the first person, person to get vaccine. If there is a limited supply of vaccine, then nodes like V should be vaccinated first. Okay. So, yeah. So, as I say, so the, its removal could have very strong repercussions in various networks like the epidemic network example we have already taken in the information network. Say for instance, the uh, uh, internet network that the internet router network that we were looking uh, at in the last day's lecture. So, if one of the nodes like V gets uh, shuts down at some point in time, then the entire internet backbone of a particular region might fall through. Okay. So, there are, so it is very important to maintain the functionality, maintain the well being of such nodes which sit in between such in between between otherwise disconnected regions. Okay. It is only through this particular node that the two regions get connected. If so, these this type of nodes are very, very important. Okay. So, similarly in the traffic network, if if a particular road or uh, is the only connecting road between say two different uh, geographies and if that there is a blockage in that road, then you can immediately understand that uh, the entire traffic flow from one region to the other region will get disturbed. So, these kind of nodes actually are important in various different contexts. Okay. So, now, so that is all about the betweenness centrality. Now, the question is that uh, sometimes, uh, so, so suppose in case of information spreading that is happening in a particular network and there is a node V. Now, these nodes actually have a very strong advantage of keeping the information restricted to itself okay, and not passing it or not forwarding it any further. Okay. So, this is a undue advantage that these types of nodes actually get. So, if the node wishes, then it can keep the information up unto itself and not pass it on any further. So, uh, in such cases passage of information 
to the rest of the network is completely blocked. So, in the these contexts, such nodes are also often called brokers or social brokers. Okay. So, they keep the information and they they actually do not pass it unless and un until there is some advantage, extra advantage given in terms of say money or something to them. Okay. So, unless and until that is done, they do not actually pass on the information any further. So, so then, so what is the way out? The way out is to look for not so strong brokers in the network. So, the idea is in terms of quantification as I was uh, telling you that for betweenness centrality you need to look for shortest paths. What if, if we could look at not all so, not all so short paths, a little longer paths. Okay? So, if we could also include in our definition not only the shortest paths, but if there is any path between a between two regions through a node v not only shortest path then we consider it. Of course, as, as soon as I give you this definition there is a limitation to it for large graphs it is very difficult to compute paths of any length. Okay. This is well understood this is a hard problem. So, paths of computation of paths of any length is a very difficult task. Okay. So, only we can do so in smaller size graphs. Okay. So, that idea where you can include okay, other paths other paths in the definition gives us a new definition which is called flow betweenness. Okay. So, in flow betweenness what the, the major difference between betweenness centrality and flow betweenness is that in case of flow betweenness you can consider not only the shortest path, but also any other path path of any length that passes through v between a pair of nodes s and t. Okay. And like a motivating example is what I have given in the uh, slides in green. Okay. So, so, this is the simple broker example that I was talking of, but in the probably in a context which is more relevant to you people. Okay. You can read it up yourself. Okay. Fine. So, now the question is like we have so far learnt at least two different ways of measuring the importance of a node in a network. Okay. One of them was the degree centrality and the other one of was betweenness centrality. Now, the question is, is that all? Okay. Is, is, is there any other way in which uh, the prominence or the importance of a network can be of a node can be defined? Okay. So, the answer to this is if you ask me the answer to this is yes and another example that I will put forward in front of you now is the following. Suppose, you have a sexual contact network like the Swedish sex wave that I have showed you earlier. So, in that context this particular example is very relevant. Say there is one node A and there is another node B out here. Okay and the node A has many sexual contacts, okay. whereas the node B has only one sexual contact C. Now, given this piece of information, our question is whether from this information we can say which among these two nodes A and B uh, is more prone to say a sexually transmitted disease. Okay. Who among A and B is more prone to an STD? Okay. Now, in order to answer such questions, so, so if you just look into this particular snapshot or this, this much information from the graph probably that is not enough. And some of you probably have already guessed why, because the, it might be the case that although B has one partner C, but C itself has many, 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 many sexual partners. 
okay. And in that case, the chances that B gets infected by uh, STD is way even way higher than A itself, okay. So, many means I really mean many, many, okay. So, the idea therefore, is that your propensity to get infected depends on your neighbors propensity to get infected and that in turn depends on their neighbors propensity to get infected okay, and so on and so forth. So, this is a recursive definition, definition of centrality fine. So, in other words if you can think of also think of it in terms of prominence or importance. So, your popularity or prominence is actually determined by the popularity of your neighbors or of your friends, their popularity is determined by their friends and so on and so forth. So, so your popularity is actually a share from your friends, your friends as friends, your friends as friends as friends and so on and so forth. So, it is a recursive definition. Okay. So, and the best way to encode this recursive definition is in the form of what we will now study the eigenvectors. Okay. Eigenvector centrality. Fine. So, as the name suggests, this will borrow concepts from your school days, where you have been introduced to the idea of eigenvectors and simple linear algebra. Okay. So, the idea is very simple. So, you have to express the popularity of yourself in terms of the popularity of your neighbors okay, and so on and so forth. So, suppose you guess, so we make a guess that the initial popularity popularity of a vertex or a node i is given by say x i 0. Okay. Now, we look for in every step we look for improvements of x i. Okay. Now, the improvement x i 1 that is improvement at step 1 can be written as a i j x j 0. That means, suppose you have a node i out here okay, and it is connected to some j other nodes and j s popularity is say x j 0, then the popularity of i in step 1 is the sum of the popularity of all its neighbors. Okay. So, here A i j is nothing but the entries in the adjacency matrix, adjacency matrix which holds the neighborhood information. So, if i is a neighbor of j, then in the adjacency matrix there will be an entry 1, otherwise the entry will be 0. So, this is a 0 1 matrix, a binary matrix which actually expresses the neighborhood relationship of i. Okay. So, now as you can see from this expression out here, what you do is you look at all neighbors of i, that is why a i j. Okay. If j is a neighbor of i, then the popularity of j counts into the new popularity, the improved popularity value of the node i. Okay. And in this way, you keep on doing this. So, you continue, continue improving the popularity values. So, this you do for every node, popularity values continue improving the popularity values for every node 
until there is no further improvement possible. Further improvement possible. Fine. So, this can be very nicely encoded in a functional form. So, x t is x t which is kind of a vector of all the popularity values of all the nodes in the network is nothing but the adjacency matrix times the popularity value at t minus 1 okay. and this continues. So, this you can write as a multiplied by a x t minus 2 this can be written as a into a into a x t minus 3 and so on and so forth. And finally, x t can be expressed as a power t. Okay. The, so, the adjacency matrix is multiplied with itself t times a power t x 0. Okay. So, you start with any arbitrary x 0 values, okay, some initial guess. The final t values will be, so the point at which there is no further improvement possible, you will have a situation like this, okay, where this t is like very large. So, after that point there is no further improvement. So, the more and more uh, powers you raise a to, there is any no further changes in the matrix. Okay. And finally, you get the, the resultant x t values for each node. This is the score or the popularity score of each of the nodes. Okay. This x t contains finally, the popularity score of each of the nodes. So, this is actually referred to as the power method by power method by hotling. This is what I have written in the this slide. So, this is the this is called the power method by hotling and actually this is the method which is usually used to compute the eigenvectors the eigenvectors of a given matrix. Now, the question is like we have so far been able to give a nice expression to this x t s which is nothing but the popularity scores of each of the individual nodes after some say sufficient time steps t after which there is no improvement in the scores. Okay. Now, does this, this value get related or in some way is it related to the eigenvectors that is what we will try to see next. So, in order to do so we will start with a very simplistic assumption. So, we will say let x 0 let our x 0 values that is the values of the popularity, the initial guessed values of the popularity that you start off with for all the individual nodes. So, at time t equals 0, you have an initial guess for each of the individual nodes. So, that let that x t be a linear combination, combination of the of some of the eigenvectors the eigenvectors of the matrix A that is the adjacency matrix. So, let us express x 0. So, let us choose x 0 in such a way that it is it is actually x 0 that is a vector okay, like x 1 0, x 2 0 up until x n 0 if there are n nodes in the system is equal to a linear combination of say some constant c 1 into one of the eigenvectors okay, say, uh, say v 1 or say v i 
1 v i 2 v i 3 v i 4 and so on and so forth up to v i n. So, this is the nth eigen vector. Okay. So, this plus c 2 some v j 1 v j 2 and so on and so forth. So, if you express this x 0 as a linear combination of these eigen vectors, then you can immediately write x 0 equal to sum of c i v i okay, for all i's. Now, that would tell you. So, now from this since you have already have an expression for x t, you can write x t as a power t, we saw that x t is equal to nothing but a power t into x 0. So, we can write that x t is equal to a power t i c i v i. So, this can be written as i lambda i t c i v i, where you know from the eigenvector equation that a x is equal to lambda x or a v say, where you know that a v is equal to lambda v. Okay. So, that means, a square v is equal to lambda square v and so on and so forth. So, from there you get this particular equation. Okay. So, here in this case lambda is the eigen value eigen value okay, of the okay, let us write later on. So, lambda is the eigen value corresponding to a particular eigen vector. Fine. So, from there you can write x t if you see some simplification will tell you that x t you can bring out the principal eigen value outside and you can write the rest as lambda i by lambda 1 power t for all i c i v i. Okay. So, now in the limit of t to infinity x t by lambda 1 t is nothing but c 1 v 1, because everything else all other values okay, goes to 0. So, t tends to infinity means this lambda 1 is larger than all the other lambda values. So, this fraction is always lower than 1. So, this power always tends to 0. So, you so everything becomes 0 except for the first one except for the case where i is equal to exactly 1. So, when i is equal to 1 this is lambda 1 by lambda 1 that becomes 1 power t that is 1 c 1 v 1 plus the rest x everything goes out due to in the limit t tends to infinity. So, basically what you have is that the popularity values values correspond to the principal eigen vector v 1 the principal eigen vector. So, if you just calculate the principal eigen vector of the adjacency matrix you immediately get the popularity scores okay. that is why this is called the eigen vector centrality. Thank you.